Now, let us um, use an example to go through what we just discussed earlier on. Right? Now, given that the function fg are defined like this, so of course I expect you to understand the round bracket versus the, the, the square bracket. Okay? So uh, there are two functions, f and g. Define fg and gf if they exist. So of course we need to first figure out whether fg exists or gf exists or both exist and then find the composite function. So here we go. Okay, number one. Alright, so let's get started. Okay, for fg to exist, alright, the condition states that the range of g must be a subset or equal to the domain of f. Agree? based on what we discussed earlier on as well. So uh, first thing we need to do is to go figure out what is the range of G. So the range of G is not something difficult because this is a very simple example and therefore a very simple graph to sketch. So to find the range of G, all we need to do is to um, sketch out this graph. Again, this graph is not anything too challenging. It's um, an x square graph that starts from uh, negative 1. So it goes this way all the way up. Okay, so it starts from negative 1. Uh, inclusive okay and uh, it ends at ne uh, positive 2 uh, all right and inclusive as well so of course when it is at 2 this value has to be 4 okay so this is our G the graph of G okay and as you can see uh, the range of G is actually equal to 0 all right inclusive all the way to 4 and inclusive okay uh, while well, the domain of F well, domain of f we don't have to find because it's given to us. So it is from 1 to 3, inclusive of 3 but exclusive of 1. So in this case, we can see that um, this range of g uh, ranges from 0 to 4, inclusive on both ends, cannot be fitted inside this domain of f. In, in other words, this domain of f is too small. Okay, to use an analogy, just think of it as, uh, well, this is a box and these are the contents that these contents cannot be put inside the box. So in this case, it is not a subset because, you know, it cannot be put inside the box. So it's not a subset and obviously it's not equal. So what we say is that, well, since, okay, since the range of G is neither a subset nor equal to the domain of F, right, therefore, uh, FG uh, doesn't exist. Okay, so in this case, since FG doesn't exist, uh, there is no need to define FG at all, isn't it? Okay, then move on to GF now. Okay, so let's investigate if GF exists. So for for GF to exist, pardon me, for GF to exist, okay, so the condition is such that the range of F has to be equal or subset to the domain of G. So the range of F is something that we need to figure out now. So the range of F, we have to go to F and take a look at F. Okay, which means we need to draw, uh, sketch out the graph of F. Again, this is a very simple example. It is a lawn curve that's um, pretty elementary by now. So uh, it ranges from 1 to 3. So it starts from 1. And uh, Y equals to lawn X graph. Well, this is our Y equals F. Okay, uh, starting from 1, uh, this is actually the x-intercept. So uh, what you need to understand is that, um, well, the x-intercept happened to be, hold on, let me erase away this part. Okay, so the x-intercept is, is our starting point, so exclusive. So this is 1. This is how the curve should look like. Okay, you shouldn't draw anything below it because uh, there isn't any x value that is less than 1. Okay, so 1 to 3. So let us imagine that this is 3. Okay, and uh, obviously this is inclusive. Um, this y coordinate, the y value will be then ln 3. Make sense? Okay, so from, from here, as far, uh, as far as what we can see, um, the, the range of f Okay, it's not that difficult to tell. That is from 0 to ln 3. So um, the range basically talks about the lowest point to the highest point of the graph. So the lowest point is at 0, and the highest point is at ln 3. And uh, the 0 is exclusive, it's not inclusive, simply because the 1 here is not um, inclusive. So far, so good. All right, so the range of f is range from, um, all right, this is a round bracket, 
Okay, doesn't look very round here. Okay, zero to dawn three. So the domain of G again, we don't have to find this because it's always given to us. Right, it's from negative one to positive two, inclusive on both ends. Okay, so now we need to check is that uh, whether this content can be placed inside this box. So we do see that this box is a little bit roomier. Okay, and therefore it's bigger than the range in this case it means it's a subset right the range is a subset uh, this this range of it because um, this this lawn three uh, you can go and figure out what is the value I think it's about one point uh, one point something okay you can use your GC and find that out so let me give you a minute lawn three is about one point zero nine eight Okay, 1.099 thereabouts. So this value is uh, smaller than 2. So it is a subset. So what we say would be since okay, the range of f is a subset. In this case, it's a proper subset. Okay, it's, it's really smaller. So it's a subset of domain of G in this case. And therefore, um, GF exists. Ta-da! Okay, so... Now that it exists, well, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking you must be hoping it doesn't exist, right? So that you don't have to find, but well, it doesn't happen this way. So, uh, well, it exists, and yes, now you will have to define the, F, uh, the GF. So the GF, okay, uh, give me a minute, where's my pen? Okay, so the GF simply means that you're going to substitute F into the G. Remember what we talked about earlier on um, when we discussed that, well, uh, FG is, is actually uh, doing the function, undergoing the function G first, followed by F. Yeah, so in this case, what we are dealing with, okay, let me, yep, okay, it will be GF, and therefore we will undergo the F first, then G, which means that we're going to uh, put in our X value into F, Okay, and then followed by uh, G. In this case, means we're going to substitute in the um, F into the G. So in this case, it becomes ln x bracket square. Okay, so this is our GF, and of course, every time we define a function, be it composite, inverse, or otherwise, or anything else, uh, do take note we need to define the uh, domain. So the domain of GF is the domain of F, okay, and therefore it will follow the same domain as x between 1 to 3, inclusive of 3 only. So far, so good. Okay, all this we discussed a bit uh, earlier on, uh, so, so in case you a little bit confused, you may want to refer back. Okay, so now, uh, what else we need to do? Let's take a look. Uh, for each of the composite function, find its range. So now we need to find the range of GF. Now, there are generally two ways to find the range. Okay, so let me um, take a look at this. So our GF, let me rewrite GF here. Okay, so GF is equal to the square of ln x. Okay, give me a minute. Uh, okay, square of ln x, whereby the domain range from 1 to 3. Okay, so what you can do, the two ways you can do this. One, one way is, of course, the most obvious way, is to use your graphic calculator. Key this in, key the information, you will see the curve. Okay, uh, you see the curve of this uh, square of ln x, and uh, you just have to figure out where's the lowest point and where's the highest point. Uh, the trouble with using graphic calculator is that you won't get this form that they want, okay, which is called the exact form. Uh, in, in other words, they don't want decimal number or approximated decimal numbers. So far, so good. So in this particular example, we have no choice, but we have to do this, what I call the tracing method, okay, something like uh, what we discussed earlier on uh, here. Okay, if you remember, right, that uh, we now in this particular example, we are interested to find this Z1, Z2. Okay, uh, because it is actually the the range of the composite function, because we, we are going to put in the X1, X2, okay, and we want to know what comes out of it. So we are not interested in all this Y3, Y4, Z3, Z4, all this, no, not really interested. Okay, so we, we are, what we're interested in is simply the Z1, Z2. Now, how are we going to find in in a real life question like this okay just now was theory and now it's practical so how do we do that well one thing you need to understand is that well maybe I should color code it again okay so uh, let this fg uh, fx function be a red function okay and uh, let our gx function be the blue function okay so 
as what we per, uh, as what we understand from what we discussed earlier on, GF is a shortcut. Okay, so GF is a shortcut that goes this way. And uh, what we understand is that we are going to undergo the transformation of F first, okay, mapping under F, and uh, the result is going to be mapped under G. So the result is what we're interested in because that is actually uh, what we're going to substitute into G. So in this particular example, okay, what we what we want to do is we to find out what is the range of F, okay, uh, this this these values here and the range of F we actually can get it from the graph here okay because uh, we actually drew it earlier on to find the range of F so in this case what we understand is that the range of F is from um, 0 to ln 3 okay and uh, let me redraw our G GX one more time maybe blow it up a little okay now our original GX looks a bit like this Okay, so it, it starts with uh, starts from minus one and it ends at two. Okay, so which is why uh, we can fit in our zero to ln three. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to fit in exactly what we are going to do, right? This this range of values, which is um, zero to ln ln three. Ln three being about one point zero one uh, is somewhere here. Okay, so what we want to find out is when we put in this range of values, okay, between zero to ln three, what happened, or rather, what turns out, what what comes out of it. Obviously, when you put in zero, uh, it remains at zero. When you put in ln three, this value here, okay, uh, is simply substituting x equal to ln three into our g, isn't it? So let me label. So this is our gx in case you're confused already. Okay, so what we do is uh, we're going to put in uh, x equal to ln 3, and this value here will be ln 3 bracket square. Okay, and as you can uh, imagine or understand, that uh, this is actually the range of f, which is the 0 to ln 3. Now we're going to put in this 0 to ln 3 into the g, uh, which means that uh, we're going to impose the range of f as the domain of g. Whew, sounds a bit complicated, but I think you get it, right? So, so this this domain, uh, I mean, this range of f now becomes the domain of g, and the outcome is from zero to ln three square. Okay, it means that uh, when I map this over, okay, these red color values, okay, is going to be from zero to ln 3. Now as you can see, okay anyway let me let me break this bracket. As you can see there are actually many many more uh, values because you see there are so many other x around right so many other x and uh, all this belongs to the the outer part of this uh, domain of g alright because it being a subset there are other values right so there are like values at 1.5, 1.3, 1.0 whatever so, so all these values will have their respective image Okay, Im images uh, here. Okay, all this will become the range. So as you can see, it's just a subset. Okay, so in this case, uh, our problem is solved. Uh, if you notice, so the range of GF, okay, will be from zero to ln three, inclusive and uh, exclusive of this. So this is the answer that we are really interested in, um, and. We can't really get this from the GC uh, graphic calculator unless, hmm, well, you know what is the value of ln 3 square in decimal, okay, which is unlikely, right? So, yep, so this is the only way. So, okay, 